I read 101 books this year and I'm sure your first question is, well, do I have a life? And the answer I think is yes, I think. And then I'm sure the next thing you'll want to know is what books should you read? What books did I enjoy and why and what might appeal to you? I split the books I read this year into four categories, fiction, non-fiction, plays and then screenplays because I always read a couple of them for good measure because why not switch up the medium? I'm going to try keep this to one sentence but we'll see how we go. A Scanner Darkly is a classic Philip K. Dick short story, interesting take on a science fiction subject, heavily revolved around drugs this time, did enjoy, a little confusing but that's not abnormal for the author so. War and Peace is obviously ginormous to begin with. It is a heavy undertaking of a book. It is worth it in the sense that because there's so many words you have lots of character development and an actual interesting lifetime progression of human beings. However, I would say for the length of the book and the number of shorter books you could read in the same time, it's probably not necessarily your best bet. I'm late to the game with Where the Crawdads Sing, but an incredible book and an absolutely worthwhile read. I'm counting The Lord of the Rings as free books because I read it in the free book format. Incredible world building, absolute fantasy classic, should be read at least once in your lifetime, and just very heartwarming and slightly soul crushing at times. The Hobbit is probably better than Lord of the Rings in my opinion. It's a slightly smaller scale story but somehow it packs as much in. To be honest I found this book when I was at someone else's batch and just decided I wanted to read it in an evening. Honestly really surprised at how good it was. First two thirds of this book were incredible, last third kind of spiralled off into some weird thing that I don't really understand and feel like it needed to mostly just abide by the laws of science fiction. The book is absolutely top tier, a fantastic novel, just a book you should read. Anna Karina is kind of similar to War and Peace to me, although I would actually put it slightly above War and Peace. It does give you really interesting relationships with the main characters. I wouldn't quite say that I personally felt a fondness for them, but I did feel this real sense of empathy, which Tolstoy I feel like cultivated very well, so I probably would read that before War and Peace to be honest. I started on the Dune series last year and to me personally this is the peak of the Dune series. The amount of mental capacity and imagination it would have taken to execute the ideas that are in this book is literally incredible. I could say way more about it but I don't want to spoil the plot for anyone who is reading the Dune series. I watched the film as a kid and didn't realise it was a book series until this year. It was a really well written novel. It deals with such complex subjects but it's written in a way that makes it super simple to understand and I really like that. I was on a science fiction like book film tangent so obviously I went to The Martian next. Best science fiction with humour included I've ever seen. It seems like such a hard crossover to get right and Andy Weir nailed it with this one. This book is basically about what would have happened if Nazis had won the world war. Philip K. Dick actually orchestrated this novel really really well. It still was a little confusing to me with what kind of um, countries and um, ethnicities were where in the social hierarchy compared to the Nazis or whatever Nazis them had gone to. Um, but it was a really interesting subject to tackle. Honestly, this book's a little blurry for me. I kind of forgot everything that happened after God Emperor of Dune. Animal Farm is probably the peak of literature as far as I'm concerned. There's no other book you're willing to find in the world that has such a wealth of examinations, topics covered, thought-provoking ideas, and just general fantastic writing in like a tiny little novella. It is so well executed, everything is there for a reason, and if you only read one book in your life I'd say it probably should be Animal Farm. Very interesting, very Murakami-esque, that's definitely a word. It's so simple and I do love that, so Murakami book's really simple and then throws some spanner in the works and this book definitely did that so I did really enjoy reading it. Short story collection which I don't usually go for but because of Murakami's writing style I was really interested to see what he'd come through with because he's done a few short story collections as far as I'm aware. I actually really enjoyed these and they're a great way to you know read if you don't feel too committed to reading. It was all getting a bit 
finicky to me at this point. There's basically just lots of murder and plotting and who was going to rule the universe type sphere. So fantastic. I love how universal so many themes in this book are and how much it's affected society compared to I feel like perhaps the number of people who have read this book. Absolutely magnificent. This is actually my mum's favourite book. Super short but deals with some really big ideas and I think I did cry at the end so it was a worthwhile read. I know I'm so late to this book but it is a phenomenal read especially if you're a teenager or in your early 20s or if you're ever feeling confused or distracted or unsure of where you're going in your life. This is the book to do it. This was the first time I'd read anything of Simone de Beauvoir's and it was interesting but I also just got a little bit annoyed at how dumb some of the characters were to be honest. Essentially a chef's kiss of a novel. Absolutely brilliant worth every hype it's ever received and I now need to go watch the film because I haven't. I had wanted to read this for such a long time and I didn't really know too much of what it was about but I am so 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 happy with this book. It didn't just meet any expectations or ideas I had, it exceeded them, it threw me through the roof, it kind of made me want to like hide in a bunker and with all the lights on for clarification and just hold up there and kind of sit for a while. Absolutely fantastic book. The best book I read in the whole year by a nautical mile. If you're interested in the idea between fame and then mental health, this is a great book to do it. Free women who move in and out of the industry slash public eye unintentionally slash intentionally and then the spiral they go on for clarification, dolls is another word for pills. I got my good old Dostoevsky for the year in and this was a fantastic book. It's a slow build as in you wait a really long time for things to get interesting and it's a little bit of a slog but the final few chapters in the final part of the book unpack everything and have these grand revelations on justice, God, society, murder, life, death, et etc. It is worth it to hold on to the end just to get to that final kind of part of the book. It didn't live up to my expectations. I was quite disappointed. Maybe the writing style just doesn't suit me and the way my brain works and the way I read, but I was a little disappointed. So sorry people from Dublin and Ireland in general. If you really feel like crying, this book's the perfect way to do that because I think I cried about every 20 pages, which means I cried at least 10 to 14 times throughout the course of the book. This book took me over a year to finish because I didn't want to finish it. I don't know if it was just this book or Charles Dickens in general, but I really didn't like it and it might just be one of those authors or books that I don't get along with even though I understand how the themes, conventions and ideas are really important. I think this is the most interesting examination of death I've ever had in my life, but it was interesting if not rather unsettling. I reread Call Me By Your Name because I was in Italy and I had to. I still love it. Probably one of the most unsettling, uncomfortable feeling books I've ever read because you can see the downward spiral as it's happening and even be predicting it before it does. It's quite terrifying and I do actually think the film adaption was really good from the novel. A slightly confusing book that really made me question the perception of reality and how we relate to things outside of ourselves and also internally. I reread Call Me By Your Name again because I was in Italy for long enough to. I think this book has cultivated the most undescribable feelings within me that a book ever has and I don't quite know how to describe it but it's definitely something very different to every other piece of literature and writing I've ever read in my life. So I would probably recommend it. I'd heard about this book for a while and when I finally got around to reading it I was actually really pleasantly surprised because I had no clue what it was about and I also didn't know who Patti Smith was but it made me really happy reading it if not obviously a little sad at times due to the contents but it felt like it was a very necessary book to be written which I think is really pleasant so. I'm not a big one for crime personally it was 
interesting but not my vibe so another Dostoevsky I was really pleasantly surprised at the way someone who technically has a lesser mental ability is uh, conveyed through the book he has a lot of uh, traits qualities and observational abilities that make him smarter than the majority of people it's interesting to see how much classic fairy tales or stories that everyone knows have changed from the original text and I definitely found that with this book and really enjoyed the original. I've got to say, I listened to this one on an audiobook um, with me missus and um, me, me love and all that sort of thing. It made it so much better to listen to, to be quite frank, so I really enjoyed it. It was fantastic. Great insight into some senses of British culture that I was not familiar with in the slightest. My only critique of this novel is the fact that I didn't realise it was set in Paris and I didn't read it in Paris. First book I've ever read that actually has a positive take on artificial intelligence and made me cry a couple of times. Very heartwarming and very soul comforting. The pinnacle of dystopian apocalyptic futures, really terrifying to read rather scary and based on how long ago it was written as in 90 years ago and what Aldous Huxley was thinking about and imagining and how it's technically a very plausible reality terrifying incredible fantastic but not a book to read if you want something nice <laughs> another really interesting dystopian future that I did enjoy um, but wasn't too much of anything special unfortunately I'm required to read at least one Stephen King novel a year for my own sanity and I picked The Dead Zone and it was a pretty good read, I was quite surprised. Moving on to non-fiction. This is easily the best non-fiction book I've ever read because it's basically a self-help book without the slightest intention of ever being a self-help book. It's interesting to see someone removing themselves from society, especially in the time period it was written, and absolutely fantastic uh, documentation. I absolutely love old self-help books and to be honest this one was actually pretty useful. I then also followed it up with a sequel because I found it in an op shop as well so it was pretty good. <laughs> Unfortunately I can't even remember the contents of this book so I can't say anything about it. I picked this up in an op shop and it's really interesting to see how what we term as feminism has changed across kind of 50 to 60 years or so because the problems then, some of them are still applicable today but some of them are completely different and it's really interesting to see how that has changed. This was a pretty heartbreaking book but I do think there's so many positive messages and inspiration to take away from this book. I think this is definitely a book that women and also men who are interested should read because I think it shows us a lot of what um, like feminine energy actually is and the diversification within that. To be honest I feel like this is a book I need to reread but I do remember at the time it gave me a lot of really applicable actionable lessons. I don't remember anything about this book whatsoever except for the fact that it kind of told you that it wasn't important to abide by certain rules or have certain things in order to be that girl or anything to that effect and I did enjoy that take on what is a pretty popular subject nowadays. The classic manifestation book which I needed to get around to reading and it was interesting but I don't think it is a be all end all sort of read. The Yoga Sutras of Pantajali was a book I read uh, for my 200 hour yoga teacher training and to be honest I did actually find it really interesting but if it's not in your sphere don't go out of your way to read it. I mean everyone wants clear skin so I need to pick on skincare. Woo! This one was pretty good though. I am quite fascinated by old Hollywood and the studio era and I did find this book really interesting to read. If you've ever done anything in the acne sphere you will have heard of Stella Adler and this book is fantastic. I loved it. Also followed it up with this one because acting books are useful and learning different techniques is useful. This is a fantastic book and I think it's so applicable to so many people even if you don't immediately realise how it, how it could be useful to you. Oh my gosh, it changed so many perceptions in my mind about work. Probably one of the best psychological books I've ever read. Really fascinating, absolutely worthwhile if there's anything in your life you're wanting to change. He basically just talks about why painting is better than sculpture and rants about a bunch of subjects which he feels like getting mad about. 
But it is good. This was a classic book you were supposed to read. Personally, I wasn't that interested in it. Maybe it's just not my vibe. This is a pretty good self-help book. Definitely a great way of reframing your mind and the way you picture things to do with yourself. Uh, you may have heard that our dress style is very quote-unquote casual, which basically means no one whatsoever makes an effort ever. So I'm trying to improve a little bit. And this book definitely did help with that. So propos. Another 101 because 101 is the trending... Oh my gosh, this is kind of creepy. I only just realized that. Why is 101 my trending number? What does it mean? Is it a spiritual epiphany or does it mean I'm going to kill some Dalmatians? This was really fascinating, although it did cover a lot of topics or things I've already personally thought about. If you're in any way involved in business or branding or you find any of those subjects interesting, this is the book to read. It's absolutely fantastic and just sh like hands down one of the best books for running a business I've ever found in my life. If you don't know who Sidney Lumet is, the film of his you have most likely heard of is 12 Angry Men and he talked about his entire filmmaking career and the filmmaking process in depth and it's absolutely fantastic. It was so good, I learned so much from it and just loved it. If you're into filmmaking, it's one of the books to read. I really enjoyed this because it's quite different to a lot of other holocaust films or novels that I've read and it basically examines humans in those circumstances rather than analyzing the circumstances itself, which I think is quite a interesting way to purvey that subject. Moving on to plays. This was the first Edward Albee play I ever read and it was really interesting. The relationships between the characters are so intense and so thick and the atmosphere is really interesting. I really enjoyed reading it and I would love, love, love to see it performed on stage at some stage. This is my favourite play of all time. If I don't see it on stage in the next year or so, I'm probably going to throw a hissy fit and fly somewhere stupid to go see it live. So I actually played Peggy Murdoch in this play earlier in the year. It's set in 1920s England and is a really interesting story with a great plot twist. Probably one of the few crime subject things I've ever really enjoyed, but it was a lot of fun to be in as well, so it probably gives me a little bit of fondness for it. Hamlet is obviously one of those plays that you should read and it's absolutely worthwhile. Fantastic play. It deals with the idea of l'enfer c'est les autres, which is essentially the idea that hell is other people. There's only four characters in total and basically three of them are just locked in a room together in hell for ages and they basically go, wah, 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 wah. oh no, I don't like you. Definitely one of the most interesting ideas I've ever come across in the play sphere and I really enjoyed reading it. If you would like a play that will help you re-examine your entire view on society, work and what it basically means to be alive, Death of a Salesman will do it for you. I read this because I had to do a monologue from it and fortune that my outside hath not charmed her. Personally, King Lear wasn't my favourite Shakespeare I've ever read, but I'm still glad I read it because I think Shakespeare's work should be read, so I actually listened to a recording of this when I was in Venice and it really added to the atmosphere of the play and I enjoyed it a lot. This is my favourite Oscar Wilde play ever. He's got such a fantastic sense of humour and it's really entertaining. This is a really great examination of society, relationships and what's considered proper and once again there are so many good one-liners in it. I honestly do wonder how Oscar Wilde got away with as many of them as he did. This was a slightly creepy play to be honest and it did unsettle me a little bit but it was still really good, still engaging and I did like it I think. This is a fantastic examination of life at the time it was written and it's really interesting how different society was and I do think this play really conveys that subject and lifestyle and time and history really really well. I was going to do this play but unfortunately I had other things come up so I didn't get to. A really interesting play about black male political corruption and relationships basically what people are willing to do in order to achieve the things they want. This is one of the first Greek ones I've read and I did find it quite confusing and I did need to go back and actually look up um, to understand exactly what was happening. I never had realised that Oscar Wilde had basically written a play about 
the Russian motherland and uh, it was interesting. <laughs> it was really interesting, um, but it was very unexpected when I came across it. So to be fair, this wasn't my favorite Shakespeare either, but oh well. All I have to say is I don't know what the Duchess was thinking throughout this whole play because she seems to have basically just spent most of it going crazy and getting crazier and doing really dumb things. So. I don't even know what was happening to be honest. Last Night in Soho, fantastic film, well written screenplay as well. I think the screenplay for Emma was well written and conveyed a lot of the book really concisely which I was quite happy about. Lady Bird is a really interesting script because essentially it's gone straight from script to screen and you can really clearly see what they were trying to achieve even without the visual imagery. I read the book series last year and when I watched the film I was a little bit disappointed in some ways although I do still think many parts of it were really good and the script did give me a little bit of clarification into some areas in the film that kind of seemed a little bit different. I actually haven't seen this film I've only ever seen snippets of it and to me reading the whole script was really interesting and I just want to know how they pitched this movie because it would have been a hard pitch. The thing I like about Wes Anderson scripts is that they're essentially written like they are novels and I do enjoy that a lot because it kind of makes sense when you see one of his movies. The main thing I was really disappointed about when I read this is that there are actually a couple of major clues written into the script really early on that didn't make it into the final film and I think they would have done really well if they had been in there but maybe it would have spoiled the plot line so who knows. Classic cry. Big cry, lots of crying, and more crying. While I was editing I realised I forgot to mention Under the Skin by Jonathan Glazer which is an incredible film that should absolutely be watched. Stellar performance from Scarlett Johansson and the script definitely kind of went towards a higher budget than I think they had so there was a reasonably sizable difference between the original screenplay and the finished film but that was really fascinating to see from like a budgeting sort of side. I hope from my reviews that you found some books that you're going to read and can hopefully enjoy and might even become your new favourites. I'm really excited to do this video again at the end of 2023 and I hope you enjoyed and have a good day. Adios amigos!